Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it to shore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from its storeroom both new and old. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I was recently in North Carolina vacationing with my family. Every day, my wife and I walk at the beach looking for little treasures, a pretty shell, some sea glass, or a fossil or two. So when I was reading the gospel for today, I started thinking about treasures. What exactly was Jesus trying to tell his followers and you and me today in this gospel? On the surface, we have three unrelated stories, but when we look deeper, we discover that Jesus is telling us about the kingdom of heaven. Jesus spoke in parables or stories because that is what the people of his day understood. Parables are used primarily by teachers when they are trying to change someone's mind or shift someone's focus of reality. Parables lead the person listening to the conclusion that you could not get there from here. In other words, one has to acquire a new way of looking at the world around them. The first two parables, easily understood by the people of Jesus' time, and maybe by many of us who heard stories of people in the 1920s or 1930s hiding their savings in coffee cans, in spaces behind walls, or under the floorboards, or even under a mattress. People will take things that are important to them and hide them, making sure they are secure from outside forces. They will also spend money to acquire things that they feel are important, like the example in the parable about the merchant and the pearl. He was willing to spend a considerable amount of his available assets to get what he wanted. The third parable is the one that throws a proverbial curveball in the way that I understood it. The first message is that, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is present in our world today. He is with us in our daily struggles and triumphs. He is right in the middle of all the good, the bad, and the ugly of our world. You and I can't di dictate to everyone we encounter or change anyone or the situation we are in. We must deal with the reality that faces each of us every day. In the parable, the scribe became important. He was important because he knew the laws of Moses and of God. He was the person that everyone looked to for the answers. And many of us, I hope, feel that we have the answers because we have been taught 
the rules, traditions, and customs of our Catholic faith by our upbringing. We must remember Jesus always said that he did not come to abolish any of the laws, but to fulfill them. That is where the new interpretation comes into play. In our first reading, King Solomon's request of God, if you recall, Solomon did not request for power, wealth, or any material thing. He asked for wisdom to best serve God's people. Solomon asked for an understanding heart. This greatly pleased God, and he granted the request. That is exactly what Jesus showed his followers, as well as you and me, in all of his encounters. Whether the people Jesus was addressing were rich, poor, good, in trouble, or caught in a bad situation, Jesus demonstrated an understanding heart in all his encounters. He looked at the whole situation, not throwing away any of the rules or laws, but incorporating love, caring, forgiveness, and service to others in the situation while looking through his understanding heart with compassion. This brings me right back to my recent family vacation to the Outer Banks. Looking and watching our children, I saw the treasures that Julianne and I planted early in our children's lives. These treasures helped to shape their character, influence their decision-making, and give them an understanding heart. For us, this family was bittersweet because it brought back memories of the treasures that my mom and dad had planted in me and my siblings. As most of you are aware, my mom passed away earlier this month, and two short years ago, she had traveled with us to the Outer Banks to spend a week with my children, my brother, his wife, and his children. Until a week before she died, she was asking how we were going to get her there because she was steadfast, she was going to hold and feed her youngest great-grandchild. During our week at the Outer Banks, there were many occasions where we reminisced about Nana and what she would have cooked or how she would handle a situation situation with a loving heart with all of her children and grandchildren around. All of these memories became our treasures during the trip, and we are reminded of all the treasures she gave us during her life and how she helped pass them on to her grandchildren. To further illustrate the concept of hidden treasures I'm trying to share, I would like to share part of an article I read on Michael Jordan. It was from his interview with columnist Bob Green. He stated, my hero heroes are my parents. It wasn't that the rest of the world would necessarily think they were heroic, but there were the adults I saw constantly and admired what I saw. If you're lucky, you grow up in a house where you can learn what kind of a person you should be from your parents. And on that count, I was very lucky. It may have been the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. Early on, Michael Jordan was given a great treasure, character and honesty to draw on when he grew up. My point is that character and an understanding heart is a result of drawing on buried treasures deposited by witnesses, witnessed experiences, memories buried early in our childhood, and daily in one's heart and minds by parents, mentors, coach, teachers, and other significant adults. What are each of us putting into the storeroom of those individuals who look up to us? our children, our grandchildren, and those we encounter in our daily lives. We must make a conscious effort to plant the treasures of an understanding heart in service to others in the next generation and to be a role model for them. 
The kingdom of God is the treasure of, of example and wise counsel buried deep in the hearts and subconsciousness of the next generation around us. We need to keep that storeroom safe from all harm and filled with good things that God has offered each of us in our lives. I ask that you take an opportunity this next week to add something to that storeroom for the generation who will follow us. Amen. <laughs>